this is going to be an introductory class and hopefully in the future we'll see if there are like any needs for you or any specific uh, um, topic that maybe you would like to um, work more in the future. Um, this class will be taught by um, Dr. BC and Professor Creatoni. Uh, they work at the University of Insubria in Italy, in Northern Italy, and uh, they are part of a research group that uh, uh, works uh, on wildlife uh, ecology and management and conservation. Uh, they work with several uh, uh, governmental institutions, but also with uh, uh, parks uh, um, in Italy, and but also have several projects around the world. Um, and uh, specifically, let me introduce you to um, uh, to Professor Creatoni. He has a bachelor's degree in biology. Um, he got it in 1994 and then had a PhD in natural environmental sciences in 20 um, in 2002 at the State University of Milan in Italy. Um, he is a research associate um, uh, and has been a research associate since 2008 at the University of Insubria. And he is an expert in information technology, so GIS, data integration, uh, applied to biological topics topics with particular interest on biodiversity monitoring, wildlife management, and ecoecology. Um, so the idea is that any data that needs to be storaged or analyzed that generally uh, go through his hands. And uh, at the University of Insubria, he teaches uh, the classes of uh, ecoecology of uh, terrestrial fauna and GIS. Um, Dr. Beasy uh, is a zoologist, he's got a master's in biological science and uh, um, a PhD, um, uh, he got his PhD in, 20, in 2010 in uh, analysis, protection and management of biodiversity at the University of Insubria. During his research activities, he collaborated with uh, the Scottish research team uh, in uh, the United Kingdom and attended the summer school in ecology and biodiversity in Poland through the Marie Curie program. Um, he's got a good knowledge of uh, GIS and he uses the R software for data handling, the statistical analysis applied to biodiversity monitoring and conservation biology. Uh, he uh, has held several seminars at the Insubria University that are regarding animal ecology adaptation to climate change and camera trapping. And uh, he also works with uh, Instituto Oikos, that is uh, an NGO for uh, the, and he worked on the general management plan of Lampi Marine National Park in Myanmar. And uh, he also leads the Sun Bear Project. Um, he is a member also of the IUCN Bear Specialist Group, and uh, he has several publications in peer-reviewed journals. Um, so this is just a brief introduction for who our teachers are for this and next week. Uh, just a reminder, these classes will be on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the same time, same place. And uh, this first week will be mostly focused on R, next week more on Maxen, and the idea is that uh, uh, there will be first a more of a theoretical um, um, lesson, followed then by a more in practice lesson on your computer. But they will absolutely tell you more about this, so I will leave the word to them. Thank you, Vittoria, for the introduction. Uh, don't be scared of uh, all the titles uh, Francesco and me hold. We are rather informal, and uh, we hope that uh, uh, also these four uh, afternoons for you and the mornings for us uh, will be uh, profitable just uh, because we uh, uh, will learn to interact together. Uh, it will be not so easy in, uh, in, the, in this first lesson, you know, starts are often difficult, uh, mostly because uh, you uh, possibly are unfamiliar with the R language and with the workflow uh, you have to set up uh, using R. But uh, 
uh, this uh, afternoon uh, it will be the, the lion's share of Francesco to introduce uh, us uh, uh, and for me to have a refresher <laughs> on uh, who is R, how uh, we can work with it and uh, how we can adapt that workflow to model species presence. So, without no uh, further ado, I will uh, leave the, the floor to, to Francesco to start his talk. Uh, feel free, uh, I don't know if Francesco agrees, but I hope so, uh, feel free if something is unclear to raise your hand, you have a button on your screen to do that and interrupt, because problem uh, mostly in these first two lessons uh, will be to understand terminology on one side and base concepts uh, linked mostly to computer programming and not to wildlife. So, Francesco, it's up to you. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Maria Vittoria, and everybody to invite us uh, to do this module. And I will share my screen now so we can start. Okay. Okay. Can you see it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let's start. Okay. Our our program for these four lessons will be the one you can see in this slide. So we will talk about uh, uh, data analysis and programming today. So we will not really work on R uh, for today. We will go a little bit in more in practice uh, on Thursday. So we will start to do some import export and data wrangling. And then on next week, we will uh, switch to species distribution modeling. That is the, the reason why we are here and the question uh, we will try to answer. And finally, on the last lesson, uh, we will try to show you a case study and we will work probably on red deer distribution in, uh, in Mongolia. So today we start from uh, data analysis and uh, uh, programming. Uh, I, I want to be honest with you and uh, uh, with these lessons, you will not uh, solve all your problems on uh, uh, statistical analysis and programming, but we will try to give you some instruments to, to have a good approach to solve your, uh, your problem. Today, we will talk about uh, this strange letter, the R, uh, and then later we, I will tell you why we, uh, we will talk about R and not another letter. Uh, so we, uh, we will uh, take some focus on programming and uh, uh, I want to focus on the concept that R is a language. So how good are you with languages? This is going to make the difference in programming and then doing statistical anal analysis with R. Um, the, our problem is analyzing data, but what do we need when we want to analyze data? Two main things, actually. That what we do, we can make it again, okay? So reproducibility, uh, this is very important because uh, uh, most of the times, what we do now, we need to do it again tomorrow and next week and maybe next year. And so we want to write down something that we can use in future, not just now. Uh, and then we want some flexibility for our data analysis, because, for example, um, we can have a similar problem to solve how to model the distribution of red deer, OK, but maybe my data are a little bit different from your data, from, for example, temporal time or uh, uh, any kind of problem. So we want to be able to modify our code also for little things. 
even if our questions are the same, we want to do the same analysis, but we want something that we can adjust to our problem. Uh, actually, uh, in the past, uh, starting from the 70s, of course, statistics uh, starts a lot of time earlier than the 70s, but uh, softwares and computers started in, uh, in the first part of the 20th century and statistics on, applied on, uh, on computer on the second part of the uh, 20th century. Uh, in the 70s, actually, there were very few generic softwares. You can read some software over there, SAS, SPES, uh, S plus, and as um, you can see in this slide, uh, we are talking about S in the, in in this case. That's why we we are working on R for the next uh, uh, few hours uh, because uh, I mean uh, statistical uh, uh, people that likes to work with data and with number are sometimes a bit strange at least as much as we uh, as us that work on wildlife conservation uh, and then they decide to name the program R just uh, uh, R because there, there was already a program called S and so they wanted to do something uh, better than them. Uh, in the 80s uh, some new software, proprietary software, it means that you have to pay to use these softwares. Began to uh, to be to be used. Maybe you already heard about them. Uh, for example, CSTAT and STAS. Then something changed actually uh, from the 90s to till today. Everyone is looking for simplification not just in statistics but almost uh, in uh, any in any field and in statistics uh, the problem is that everyone thinks that a spreadsheet is the best solution to make calculation okay so when you are asking talking to with someone else and they tells you uh, okay i I'm, I'm doing my statistical analysis i've I have a very uh, good database and they say okay and uh, which is your database is a ah is my excel spreadsheet okay okay that is not a database that is not a program for uh, um, statistical analysis this that uh, the spreadsheet born to make uh, uh, financial analysis incoming uh, uh, outcoming and number like that. OK, so we are trying to make something a bit more uh, complex. So why we are trying to use R? Uh, the first point is uh, that it's free. You don't have to pay for it. And I think this is mm, pretty important. And they are, uh, the other very important uh, thing is, the, is that is uh, an open software. So uh, it means that you can see how they build it, actually, and you build, you can build the program part of the software by yourself. And if you want, you can say, you can share what you create with with the community that you use R. This is the the, the very uh, the, the the most important point about our software. Uh, of course, uh, programming probably is not our our mission we work on uh, biology wildlife conservation so we want something that is pretty easy to use but uh, once you start using her you uh, you will find that he, uh, he, he can get easier to use it uh, uh, today is considered a standard the science if you read most of the international papers and peer in peer review journals Almost anyone now use R for statistical analysis, and once you use it, uh, all all your work uh, can be accepted in the, in uh, peer review journals. Uh, it's very powerful working with big data. So we, when you have a lot of uh, uh, a lot of information to analyze, uh, for example. Uh, I was trying to model in uh, Red Deer uh, uh, 
uh, data that you share with me uh, in Mongolia. And actually, for me, that I live in Italy, Mongolia is very big, very, very big. So all the environmental variables are um, are very big and uh, that set and it's not so easy to work with them but are allows you to work also on such big data uh, there is, there are packages and function to do almost everything you need someone else already did it uh, most of the time you are asking a question there is a coffee package if you want to do a coffee actually it does not uh, 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 produce coffee, but if you look on the web, go for uh, uh, your curiosity, uh, you can find the coffee package and look what it, uh, it does. Um, R is, uh, is um, very good to program to make figure and graph uh, that can be used for papers. Uh, and the other very important things with the hard software and is that you must use your neurons. You have to think what you are doing. I remember when I started my uh, baccalaureate degree almost uh, 20 years ago, unfortunately, and there was some uh, proprietary software for statistical analysis, and I could press a button and, uh, and run an analysis, but I didn't know what I was doing. I, I was just mixing, mixing my variables and trying to find the solution. Maybe at the second, at the third, at the fourth times, uh, I tried. Uh, I was, I, I found what I was looking for, but without using my neurons. When you work with R, with R, you have to know what you are, what you want to do, and how to do it. At the beginning, it could, um, it could be difficult, but it helps you learn also statistics so that's a good point for to use hard and when you after a while when you suffer using it actually for a long time uh, and but you you see results it also can give you addiction why are always these uh, uh, the traffic on uh, email uh, email list discussion about different statistical programs and you can see in the red line R uh, now is the most used program for uh, statistical statistical analysis uh, those you can see here as plus as data SAS are uh, program that probably uh, started a lot of years ago but they are not open software so you cannot look what they do you cannot control them so they are not being used anymore so when you are doing that analysis actually uh, you follow this kind of flowchart okay uh, first of all data collection uh, I then the, the most interesting part for me was going in the field and maybe catch and trap uh, some animal, put some uh, uh, radio color and follow them. Uh, that was the most interesting part. So you start from something that you have to collect data, but then you have your data, maybe a lot of data. You have to enter your data somewhere in your computer. Then you have to process them and store them because it's very important also to store them. From processing, you will pass to uh, results and then results elaboration. Usually when you do that analysis, this is the workflow you, uh, you, you pass through. So uh, another important feature of R is that allows you to do uh, every step and check for it not as other software that they just do everything in one shot. So uh, analysis with R require several steps, okay? And every step, any time, any time you did, um, you, pro you process your data, uh, you, you get uh, intermediate results. And with R, you can store them, and maybe use later on, okay? And that is a very a good point. 
uh, in R, there is a thing that uh, if you you don't task to the program to see what he's doing, you are no you cannot look what he's doing, but when it finishes, it means that it works. But anytime you want, you can ask to the software to print out what he's doing and to tell you what he's doing. Okay. Uh, in the opposite way, other software, uh, statistical software, uh, often they do uh, everything in one shot. So you it's going to be difficult. You have to um, to make everything correct at the first uh, at the first shot. Otherwise, it's not going to work your analysis. Instead, using R, you can uh, set and and uh, adjust every step you do. Uh, in other software, you cannot use intermediate results, and often what you get from other programming is that. Uh, uh, results are long, useless, and maybe you cannot understand everything they uh, they tell you. Of course, with other programs, you have uh, advantages. Okay, so probably in standard in standard analysis. Okay, let's say uh, an easy uh, analysis of variance, for example. They probably are fast. They are very easy to interact, and you can see every single data. When you sometimes when you approach statistical analysis, uh, and that's also my uh, situation to understand what is going on. You want to see how your data change during your analysis. Okay, in in that cell there was 20. Why now is 25, and why it becomes? Uh, 26 at the end of the analysis, what happens during that? You sometimes you can look at single data using other software. But anytime you want to change your a little bit your analysis to adjust your analysis to your problem, okay? Uh, with other software, you cannot run easily non-standard analysis because they are not flexible. And uh, they often are uh, are not programmable. It means that uh, you cannot run again exactly the same times without making any effort. So they are impossible to automate. Instead, uh, R is very good to automate, reiterate, and make your analysis anytime you want and start again. Uh, Using R, you will learn, and today we will see this aspect, uh, that to solve your question, you can divide your problem in several smaller problems and make it a, a find a solution for every step. Okay. Uh, R is a language, okay? So you can program anything you need, okay? Uh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, that is more easy to press a button on your computer than write a line of a command. I'm pretty sure I do not. I do not like write command lines, but at the end, after after a while, you are using this way of statist to make statistical analysis. In it, it gets uh, a lot, a lot easier and useful. So. I remember the first time uh, a lot of years ago when Damiano showed me, okay, Francesco, and then now we shift from uh, Cistat from R programming. Okay, let's start. Okay, this was I found what I uh, uh, what I was looking at in my computer. Okay, so the first reaction was panic. Okay, because. I what, what should I do looking at this part of the uh, of, of the program? I, I, I didn't know how, how to start. Fortunately, at the moment uh, and today, it's not so difficult because there are other solution. But when you think to R and programming, this is the uh, the basic, the main the main program. Okay. Uh, of course, the R shell, as you've seen, uh, and probably if you already 
uh, the chance to work with R is not a comfy page, a comfy place, sorry. Uh, of course, uh, as every line, every command, every function you use is a text line, actually, if you think about it, you can use a text editor. So uh, you can work in an editor, so you can create a script, a program, uh, your function, uh, you can write anything you want, uh, run only when you need it, uh, and copy and paste and copy from others, okay? The, the most uh, uh, useful thing for me uh, from R is that you can copy from anyone and remember that uh, almost anything you need, everyone already did it, and if you look on the uh, on the web, you can find uh, you can find the solution. You can copy the code someone else used and adjust it for uh, your necessity. Uh, so, okay, we we don't we are not looking at this at the moment, okay? But something better and easier to use is that we will work uh, on using a program, another program that uh, uh, involves R, but gives you more instruments to use it more easily. Of course, if you look at something as this one, uh, probably is uh, uh, more comfy. It's still difficult, okay, because there are no easy buttons to press anywhere, okay? It's still difficult, but it's easier than using just the console, okay? When we uh, look at R in this part, okay, in this figure, R is the console. So the one on the bottom left on this panel. In this panel, you can see four point, four main points, okay? So the console, where you can test program, actually the console is the, 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 the R software. Then uh, you have on the, then you can adjust actually this as you prefer. Usually you can see uh, everything in this, uh, in this way, but you can make it as it's comfier for you. Uh, you have a workspace then where you can see and check the, the data set you load, the variable you are using, what they are, and then you have a, a, a part where you can see plot and the help, and then later on we can see that the help is the main and the most powerful things that are uh, brings with it. With it. Uh, and then on the top you have the, the text editor where you can write anything you want, okay? This is uh, probably the most used uh, software to work with R, and this uh, R Studio, okay? I don't know if you already use it and uh, experiment it, but uh, you can, uh, we can see, I will show you, uh, tell you uh, where you can uh, download from the next lesson. If you load R Studio and R on your computer, we can make something, uh, run some script together during the, uh, during the class. Okay, uh, R Studio, you can install it on your personal computer, okay? But if you want, you can use also a server studio uh, so you can work online on a browser and you can easily share it with someone else, okay? For example, you can share with people from a project with people from uh, other parts of the world pretty easily using uh, our, studio, our studio server. A studio server, as you can see here, is exactly the same of the hard desktop. But, um, the only difference is that instead of running directly on your computer, you're running on uh, on a browser, okay? Uh, yeah, Google Chrome, uh, Firefox, uh, or whatever you use on your uh, on your computer as a as a browser. Okay, so the uh, the first thing when you start programming with R is that you have to write something, otherwise nothing happens. You don't have just your data and press a button. You, you, you have to, uh, to write something, but R is a language. Uh, 
So before you start, you should learn grammar and vocabulary, okay? Uh, I remember uh, I, I studied for a while in a foreign country for me, it was the UK uh, a lot of years ago. I'm not good in languages and when I was there, I was looking at people and always asking, uh, can you repeat more, uh, more slowly, please, this sentence? Because I do not understand that when I was trying to talk to them, uh, my vocabulary was pretty poor at the beginning. So I, I was, um, I use always the same stru uh, sentence structure, saying almost always the same things, but learning and using language, then I, I increase my vocabulary and I focus on few important grammar rules and then I was able to, uh, to talk with everybody. So that's the point with R. You need to uh, use it, increase your vocabulary and learn few things out in words, really few. And then you can check anytime you need something different on the web what you need. Just uh, you need just to know a few words and how it works. Then uh, you can get used and you can use it. Of course, uh, you should know about something about programming because statistical analysis is important. Uh, for statistical analysis, as I said before, is important that you can focus on your problem. You divide your problem and you can find a solution. And uh, now we'll see some some as a, some uh, example about it. And we we try to learn a bit a little bit about programming. Okay, programming uh, programming is a way of thinking. Okay. Uh, and you can do it in any language, okay? The most difficult thing is to translate in the proper language, but uh, as, as long as you can think about your problem and divide it, uh, you can uh, fix the concepts you need, organize them, then you can solve the problem, okay? So the first step is not uh, thinking in our language, or how to do it with R, but is how to solve the problem, okay? Uh, and then you can write a program, but what is a program? Uh, this is an example that uh, that we are know, or very often show, and, and I think is uh, very useful uh, to understand what programming means. Uh, a program is like a recipe, so, where you start? You start from ingredients, okay? So if you look at these uh, ingredients, you see, okay, for the tough, you have flour and water, pretty easy, okay? Uh, probably in many recipe, you will find flour and water. And then you have something a little bit um, more complicated is the filling. And in the filling, you can have the mince meat, okay? But which mince meat? Uh, actually, in this recipe, mutton is the most used. Uh, probably it, uh, but here it tells that if you want, you can you can use also uh, beef. Then you have onion, garlic, and salt, pepper, and whatever. You start, okay, from ingredients, which are in, uh, in your uh, in your problem, in your question, in your work, your ingredients data okay so you start from data you have to understand which kind of data you have and then the second step okay is how to use them okay so which are the direction okay so in this case for this recipe you have to mix the meat with onion and garlic and then and you you can add water and until the mass is pretty smooth to, to work with, okay, and, and to feel, uh, uh, and to feel the other part, so, and then uh, you can taste it, and uh, if you think it's not uh, perfect, you can add, add enough salt, spices, or whatever you want, and then you get this, okay, 
Uh, I hope you know this, and uh, <laughs> I never tasted, actually I've never been in Mongolia, and uh, I hope I will find the, the way to come uh, and, uh, and to visit you. These are, I don't know how to pronounce them, actually, uh, I, I found in the uh, English language, these are booze or buzz, uh, B-U-Z-Z, -Z. and so what you have, you have ingredients and then you have direction. Programming in programming is, is exactly this, you have data and then you have direction how to use your data, okay? So it's like a, uh, programming is like to use a recipe, to write down a recipe. Of course, uh, it depends how you write your uh, your your recipe. Um, of, mm, most of the time, to solve your problem, you can start from uh, a flowchart. Okay, so you have a starting point. Uh, you have different part of your uh, of your flowchart. Uh, let's try to read what 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 this flowchart tells us uh, tells to us. Start. Address envelope, fold letter, place in envelope, okay? Then it asks you a question. Do you have a stamp? Okay. If you have a stamp, you go in one direction. If you don't have it, you go in another direction, okay? Borrow a stamp, buy a stamp, okay? Once you bought your stamp, you can go on on your program, okay? then you can place the stamp on your envelope and then your program is finished okay we wrote a letter okay this is a program okay to write a letter of course you can you can tell me okay but what for this okay it's not useful for us okay but uh, everything uh, when you are trying to program your problem you can start thinking about this it's like to write a letter, okay? It's something pretty simple. If you can write your problem in, a, uh, in steps like this one, it means that you can find a solution to solve your statistical problem, okay? So what to do? The first point that probably is the most difficult is to define the problem, okay? Okay, I want to model uh, red deer distribution. Okay, for in which part of the world? Uh, for uh, uh, my data set is um, for uh, um, uh, how many years? Okay, do I need all the time series, just a part of the time series? Uh, what I'm looking for, uh, habitat selection, uh, just the probability distribution map. Okay, until you do not define properly your problem, you cannot find the proper solution, okay? So the, most of the time of your statistical analysis should be spent in defining correctly the problem and the question you are asking, okay? Then you can find one or more solution, okay? Uh, most of the time, there is not just one solution. Actually, there are more solutions. And with our software, there is always more than one solution. There is a correct one, a wrong one. It depends. Actually, I would not say there is something correct or something wrong, but something that easier, it, it can be easier or more useful for you but it can be uh, more difficult for someone else. So there are always more than one solution. Then when you find your solution, you have to translate for the computer to understand what you want the computer to do for you, okay? Then you write it down, you check the program, if it works correctly. Always, believe me, always you will we you will encounter you will find problems along your way okay always programming and using r software you will find the problem the but r will will tell you 
which is your problem and uh, why you pass through that problem, okay? And another important thing, and we will see how to do it, is that uh, once you realize you found the solution, you work your program, you have to document what you've done. You have to write it down why you are doing that step and not another one, okay? Why you are using those data and not something else. Because when you, when you are programming, if you write down what you are doing and why you are doing that part, okay? If you need to rerun your analysis, maybe in, in one year, in two years or three years later, you, um, believe me, you will not remember why you were doing something like that three years ago, okay? So if you wrote it down, you will, you will understand what you, why you program uh, your script in that way, okay? So uh, looking for the, uh, checking all the step I just show you, starting for the first, from, for the first one, uh, the most difficult step, as I told you before, is that define the problem, okay? And how we can define our problem. Actually, we need to talk. We need to talk about our problem to someone else, okay? Uh, sometimes uh, uh, we don't have someone else to talk with, okay? So you can use uh, uh, it doesn't matter if the, the other things or person doesn't answer to you, actually. If you try to explain which is the problem, okay, to define your problem, okay, you will be able to define your problem. So you can also talk to a rubber duck and talk to it, talk to it, okay? Sometimes I talk to my students, but I'm not waiting for an answer from them. It just helps me, unfortunately for them, uh, to uh, to define the problem, talking with them. Damiano did it with me in the past. I'm doing this with some students now, and you will do it with someone else or also with your proper rubber duck. <laughs> then to find a solution, the, one of the most important uh, things, uh, and one uh, probably the most important way to uh, to do it is the you can start flow charting your problem okay uh, it's very useful for me and i think for everyone to sketch okay write it down in a way you can understand pretty easily okay i start from them okay uh, which is the the, the the second step okay for example here are here in the second box uh, you can read ask gist data, okay, starting from, okay, uh, where are my data? Okay, are uh, uh, data? Okay, uh, do I have the data? Uh, yes, okay, for now I'm, I'm done. I do not have the data, no? Okay, uh, go out on field, keep looking, uh, keep... Um, uh, getting data, then fill this data in a GIS program, and then you can work on it, okay? When you collected your data, you load your data, you can calculate something, I don't mind what, you can calculate something, then you can proceed for a uh, different step. If you can divide your work in different step, uh, you can find a solution. A flow charting is a good point to find, to divide your problem in different steps and uh, find, a, find a solution, okay? And you can work on it, okay? Of course, this is not a program, okay? You cannot ask to a computer to, okay, look at my diagram, okay? And solve my problem. Of course, you cannot solve your problem, but this is a way, a step to define, to divide your problem and to set the proper things to translate the program in something that is uh, understandable from the, your computer, okay? That is code. You can start coding it, okay? There are some uh, 
some word that you can use to uh, to say, for example, to repeat a function, uh, to work on it, and uh, you can start to translate in an, in a, any kind of languages. For example, in this part, uh, you can see it starts with er with a for for any element that belong to a particular data set, I want to do something, okay? Okay, what I want to do, okay, take a part of that data set, okay, uh, do something, I don't mind what you do, and while you are doing something, if the, there is a condition, okay, while that part is, uh, for example, here is uh, measure than zero, you can do something else, okay? Okay, this is a kind of pseudo coding, you start from a a diagram, a flowchart, okay? You can go on and try, and try to, um, to write a, a, a little sketch, a little code of that, and then you can start writing the program, okay? If you start directly trying to write a program at the beginning, where you are not uh, used to, uh, uh, to work with uh, uh, with R, with this language, is uh, it becomes pretty pretty difficult. And of course, if you share and talk with someone else about the uh, with a flowchart, anyone can understand what you wrote, which is your problem. Okay. So well, once you have this part of the of your the uh, of your programming. Uh, so uh, you define your problem, you can uh, explain this to someone else. You can share this with someone else, even if they do not know how to use our software, but they can help you in improving your flowchart. Okay, so that is pretty important. So you start from a concept, then you translate the concept, using proper grammar rules, okay? And now we'll see how to use the grammar rules. Okay. The second part is, okay, I start to write the program, okay? But sure, as I said before, there will be errors. Errors can be of different types. Grammar errors are the most common errors that you will you, you will encounter programming but they are the most easy to solve because it's just grammar okay it's not a it's not a great problem it's not a concept problem okay then you can have a syntax error so if you wrote not correctly your sentence in your language and then I hope you will not find that this kind of problem or, pro or, or errors, the project errors. If you in encounter a project errors, it means you have to go back at the beginning and define again your question and try to flowchart your problem in a different way, okay? But most of the time using our software, you will find grammar errors or syntax errors. If you find project errors, it does not uh, uh, concern our programming, but is uh, the definition of your of your uh, of your question. Okay, but when you encounter uh, when you find an error, what you have to do to go on? Okay, the first thing is to reread your program. Okay. Uh, or sometimes if you reread it and you cannot find the error because maybe it's uh, one week you are working on that code, okay? And uh, if you work on that code for a lot, long time, maybe you don't see any more errors in there. You can ask someone else to read your program. Someone else uh, that... Uh, it's not used to read that program. Probably it, it can spot out pretty easily the error. Okay, uh, then you can try to to translate that error and correct it and run your program again. Uh, you can run your program step by step.
okay? Every single line command and see which are the intermediate results. So you can find at which point of your program you have your, you find the, the error, okay? Remember, always write down what you are doing, okay? You can insert comments in programming. So you, next time you work with that uh, code, you know why you did that things, okay? And most important thing, you can share that program with someone else. If you write what you are doing, you can give your program to a colleague that maybe uh, it should run a similar analysis, okay? And you can get something from your colleague. And if they wrote down what they were doing, they wrote the documentation of the program, you can use that program and use it by yourself and run the same analysis, okay? So documentation is very important, okay? Uh, I'm wondering if you are still alive. I didn't get any re reaction from anyone. We are here. We are here. <laughs> okay. Uh, please feel free to, to ask anything, okay? Uh, okay, and uh, uh, if you don't have a question, we are halfway. I can go on. Yes, Jessica, if we don't have any questions, go on. Okay, probably the first lesson is the most boring one. Uh, from the next one, uh, uh, we will run some code and we will give you some inf some information uh, before Thursday uh, and some scripts so we can run the code together next uh, uh, next lesson. Uh, today we, we, we will talk uh, a bit more. Uh, let's start now to understand uh, our language that is R for us, okay? R software is case sensitive, okay? So remember that uh, uh, as you can see here, F is not the same of capital F. So any anytime you write a letter, if it's capital or not for R, these are two different things, okay? Remember it. Looking for errors, this is one of, the, one of the most common error, okay? If you write it in capital or not, okay? Uh, in R, there are kind of booked words, okay? So these are command on fac or, or, or function that uh, are used to say something particular. But remember that uh, Okay, sorry for the for the error here. We'll change later. I wrote the variables and the variables. Of course, you can give them any name. Okay, this is important because when you name something, okay, uh, if you name correctly, looking at it, you can easily understand what is inside that variables. Okay, if I write land cover. Okay, probably I, 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 I think in that object there will be something concerning that cover. Uh, if I call it, uh, for example, uh, uh, Maria, I don't know what is Maria variable there is inside, okay, for example. Uh, anything in R in the console and with the command enter. You, you have to press enter to make something, okay? You can add comments anywhere. When you write comments, just remember to use this symbol, okay? And uh, anything comes after that symbol is not uh, running on your program, but you can read it. It is very important, okay? And when you see something, a plus in your console, okay, that this is uh, uh, here, you can see at the bottom, it means that some the R is waiting something else to come, okay? It, it means that your common line, your sentence, 
uh, it's not at the end, but you have to write something else, okay? Uh, we'll see later on some few examples. Another very, 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 very important thing for me, I hope is going will be very important for you, is that everything in when you are programming and running R software is stored in RAM, okay? It's not wrote down on your computer, okay? Anything, variables, data, function, results. This has got a very, uh, uh, this is very important because when you work only in RAM and you don't need to write the, the intermediates on your hard disk, everything is faster, okay? But you have to remember that if you don't ask to R to write it down on your hard disk, if you close the software, you lost anything you did. Or maybe not, okay? You lost what you did for your intermediates and your results. But if you wrote correctly your program, okay, your script in the text editor, next time you can just run your, uh, your command line and you will return easily to the point where you left your program, okay? But this is important thing you have to remember, okay? If you need to write down on your hard disk, a, for example, a data frame that you uh, mix and uh, change in your uh, in your program and you don't do it, you, you will not find on your hard disk, okay? So, on one side, it's very important this way of work with R uh, because it makes anything faster because you don't need to write down on your disk, okay? But uh, in on the other way, you must remember that if you don't ask to R to write it down, you will you will not have your, uh, for example, data set brought down on your R disk. An important uh, concept in R that is that anything is an object, okay? An object is a mix of data, okay? And the function, you need to work with them, okay? So uh, a data object, so you can see on the box on the left side is, um, uh, means that you can see a data object. A data object knows which function and operator works with that, these data objects and uh, results that can come from your data objects. This is always in the active memory, okay? REM, okay? If you want to write it down, you have on your hard disk, you have to ask it. Okay. For next time, I don't know if every one of you is used, uh, already used R software and R studio. Uh, I suggest to download uh, this version if you are working on Windows or better, you can download any version you can use on your personal computer. If you use Unix, Linux or any other system, file system on your computer, please feel free to uh, download the, the R version uh, that you need. This is the last one, the 4.2.0. And uh, uh, please, if you can, uh, you can install also R Studio desktop. Or if you want to try, you, you, you can also install R Studio browser if you want to try to work from a browser. Uh, if you want to, to, to have a look on the on, on the uh, on the option you have on R Studio, I suggest to for this time to da download the R Studio desktop. So from next time uh, we will be able to uh, to work to, uh, together on scripts, and we will give you we will send you some scripts uh, later on uh, tomorrow, and uh, we will use them next uh, lab. I will start from the first 
example here. You don't need to run it on your computer, but fine. So we, we, we can talk about it. OK. Uh, here we are in the R Studio desktop. OK, so you can see the four part of the R Studio that we saw before. Uh, on the bottom left here we have the console. OK, and you can see in which which version of R we are working on. R 4.2.0, OK? And you can see that here, anytime you start R, the first thing you get is which version you are working on. Uh, I'm stressing this part because sometimes uh, uh, people uh, ask me, OK, but it's not working for me, OK? Uh, and I always ask, which version of the program you are using? This, this is true for R software, but for any kind of software you use on your uh, computer. Uh, you must be keep update your programs, OK? Uh, Otherwise, sometimes uh, the errors you get, um, you can solve them only if you have the last version of the program you are using. This, this is true for R in, the, in this case and also for R Studio, for example. Let's start from, from here to see how it works. Uh, the first things I would like to, uh, to show you is that in, in the text editor part, you can see uh, words in different color, OK? So you can see in this case is green. Uh, you can see some black or you can see some some blue one, OK? Uh, if you see the green one uh, after this uh, symbol, OK, it means that this is not a real part of the of your uh, of your program, of your script, but it is uh, a comment. This what I wrote to remember me, what I was doing, and why I was running line number five. OK, OK, let's read here, for example, let a new variable be. OK, let's create a variable. OK, we can call it n. OK, and we assign the value that is, a, is equal 10 plus 2. Of course, if you read line five you can understand what it means but this is a very easy example to start okay when you are programming and we will run uh, uh, maxent models if you don't write it believe me you will not understand what you are doing if you read it for example a few months later on okay so in line uh, in line five okay if we run it, how to run it, okay? Remember, up here we have a text editor, but we need to send it here in the console part, okay? So, uh, how to do it? We can just copy, paste it here, okay? Or we can easily use this uh, button, okay? Our studio is easier to to help you, it's easy the, and helps you with R because there are there is some button also here. Okay, this is the run button. For example, run the current line or selection. For example, okay. And if I press this button, you can see I send the line to the console. And what happens here? Okay, run uh, line number five went on, and then anything happened. You can see something. No, we cannot see anything here. OK, when you did something like this, it means that R have been able to run what you asked to do it. OK, so everything went fine for R. OK, but what happened on this part of the um, uh, on the right up? of the screen on R Studio, it arrives a new value here, 
okay? If you go on it, it tells you that is a numeric and its value is 12, okay? Okay, you can read it here, but as I said before, if you don't ask to R to say, to, 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 to write what you were doing, R doesn't tell you anything. So it means that R finish what you asked to do it, but we don't know what happened, okay? If you write down or send it in your console, the new object you wrote, and okay, it writes to you that n is now 12 okay so let's try for example and uh, if you if you have a look here the numbers are in blue of course if you use numbers the text editor in r studio uh, uh, recognize that those are numbers and not words okay now let's try to run line number 10 okay as you can see is a bit me uh, a little bit more complicated okay and uh, another important thing is that you you see something on the left and something on the right of a strange symbol okay is a this is a narrow okay we could write something like uh, equal Okay, but equal in mathematics and in logics, it means something, it can mean something different. Okay, two is equal to two. Okay, but uh, if you want to, uh, uh, if you think n is equal to 12, does it make sense? n for me in Italy is a letter of my alphabet okay so n is equal to 12 no i say I, I would say i can assign the value of 12 to the object n okay so instead of using equal that in uh, mathematics and therefore also in statistic uh, can mean something different uh, i use the arrow instead of use the equal okay so i know that something on the right I do something on the right and I will assign the value, um, the results of that part to the object on the uh, left bar of the arrow, okay? So let's run the uh, line number 10, for example, okay? As you can see again in the console, nothing happens, but something happened here at the top on the right, here before there was 12, now there's something different, different number is always just one number, okay? So if we ask to the console, which is the value, we can see that N is a something, okay? Let's go a little bit farther, okay? In, in this part of the, let, let, let's see line number 15 now you can see there something with brackets, okay? You can see round brackets here, okay? Anytime there is a word followed by brackets, it means that that word is a command, is a function, okay? It means that that function needs some arguments to be run, okay? Uh, anything in R is uh, can be a, uh, an object and when an object has got some brackets afterward it means that is a function okay uh, how to understand what does this function makes okay uh, you can understand um, probably just reading the, the function okay r norb is the name of this function this function uh, generates a, a random normal distribution. How many normal distribution? It depends on the number you write in the function, okay? So if we run number, uh, line number 15, you see something changing over here, okay? It's not just a number, but it's a vector on number. Exactly, 
if we if we print n here, okay, that's what is n now is a vector of several numbers. Okay, now let's go back to uh, to our slides. So at the beginning, at the first line number uh, five on the script before, uh, n is an integer. Then uh, in line seven, n becomes a real. And finally, n becomes a vector of 10 reals. Okay, so any object, any anything can become something different. Okay, so everything in R is an object. An object, as I said, is a mixture of data and method. Uh, if an object uh, is uh, a vector or is just a, an integer, just one number, the object knows itself because you can apply different function to different ob object depending on the uh, class of the object. Okay. So, uh, as I said before, when you want to assign a value to a variable, you use the arrow instead of the equal. I mean, you can still use the equal, but uh, uh, then when you apply statistic, you, knows, you need to use sometimes equal to say something different that assign a value to a variable, okay? If you write down as we wrote n, in this case, uh, the object in the console, you can see the object. Important things to remember, okay, a function as we uh, as we we've seen now uh, always have brackets okay in our anything you you you, you need to use uh, uh, not backslash but slash for anything you want to say uh, of course when you go uh, and you use basic uh, uh, function in r okay maybe you can remember how to do uh, a, a sum, a mean, okay, but it, mm, you cannot remember anything, okay? So uh, there are some uh, uh, useful cheat sheet that can help you uh, how to, for example, here are basic function, basic commands, okay? Uh, how can I create a vector or uh, uh, which are the most important vector vector function? How to know things about an object, for example? Okay, so uh, you can find anything you need already written down, brought down in uh, uh, in uh, cheat sheet or um, very common in the uh, in the website. Okay. Uh, to understand the difference between an object and the function, uh, I, I will show you these things now, okay? And this here. Okay. If we run line number five, LS, okay? As uh, ls what what is going to happen in the console okay let's try okay if we look at the console we some we see something very strange complicated i cannot understand what is written in here but the first line tells me that ls is a function okay okay this means that if i write down a function without the brackets, I cannot, I'm not running the bracket, the function, but I'm seeing the code of the function, okay? This is uh, the code you can see, you, if you want, you can, uh, you can easily change, okay? Not easily, sorry, you can change, but this is how it, uh, 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 it works the function. Most of the time, I don't need how to know how to, it works the function. Okay, so if we run la line 
11. Okay. LS open and close round brackets. It tells something to us. N. What does it mean that N? LS uh, is a function that uh, means list that give you, gives you a list of, of the object you have in your working environment. In our working environment, as you can see up here on the, on the right, we got just one value. And here is what we have in our working environment, an object called N, okay? So remember that uh, sometimes when you are trying to work uh, and you, this is one of the most common uh, errors you can, uh, you can encounter in R. Uh, if you don't use correctly brackets, okay, uh, you can uh, find some error. So most of the times, if you don't close, you, you forget to close the brackets, you will find an error, okay? And maybe you can, you will see on your, consoles, uh, something like that, very complicated code that you don't understand, but the problem is that you just didn't write in the proper, in the proper way what you uh, were asking to the... To the, to the... Okay, uh, let's see something, uh, something, another important concept for R, uh, Remember that when you are when you work with R, and this is very powerful. Okay, uh, you don't you do not work with a single value, but R thinks that you are always working with vectors. Okay, what what does it mean that you are applying your function not just to one number? Okay, but to anything you pass to it. It can be a vector of numbers. It can be a data set, a data frame. It can be a list of objects, okay? Each variable is a vector. So any function will be applied to any element of the vector, okay? So let's try another example, okay? I will, I will get another example here. Let me get it, okay? Just one second. I will share with you this for next time. Okay. Okay. Let's see what uh, here is uh, always another script. You can see that I always write down some comment. You can see in green. In line five, I create a variable that I call easily my variable, okay? I assign some, to this variable a value, okay? In this case, for example, the same function we applied before, okay? So let's create this variable, as you can see, I run the variable here in the console, and you can see my new variable here on the working environment. Okay, and if I say, uh, how can I calculate the mean of what? Can, can I calculate the mean of, uh, uh, of a vector? Okay, so how will, will I call you the function to calculate the mean? Of course, mean, okay, it's very easy. This is the, the way R works, okay? Uh, you can easily uh, find function that the word they, uh, you, can, you can find is exactly what they do, okay? In this case, for example, mean means that uh, we, are, we are trying to do a mean of what? Of, of this variable. So we have a variable of several numbers, okay? In our case, let's see what my variable is. Okay, is a vector of 100 numbers. If I ask to uh, calculate the mean, okay, I will get this number, okay? But if I ask 
to apply a function, okay, not just to calculate a mean, okay, for example, to, uh, to get the logarithmic of this variable, okay, I try to apply this function log 10 to what? To my variable in this case that you can see between brackets and assign the value to log my to an, another object that I call in this way. You can see line 11 log dot my var. Okay. If I run this variable, this line, sorry, I get this part. Okay. Something read in console. Okay. The first thing to remember is that when something uh, R doesn't say anything, if everything goes fine, but we it tells you that if something go, go uh, is uh, does not in the correct um, go in the correct way. Sorry. Uh, you can have two type of this warning or errors. Uh, you see something red. Okay, the color is important. Something red it means something wasn't not so good. Okay, so um, you can have warning message. It means okay, something happened. I R has been able to re, to do what you asked to R. Okay, but something happened. Be careful. So these are warning. You see, if you get an error and it, it tells you error something okay in uh, it, it means that r has not been able to realize what you were asking to the program to to the software okay so if after we run this line if you look on the uh, bottom uh, and on the app on the right here in your working environment we have a new value okay called my variable okay and uh, Again, is a vector of 100 numbers. Okay, log my var, sorry, 100 numbers. If, if we look at it, okay, let's have a look of it. Uh, okay, I, I was trying to look for my variable, if you look on the bottom of the left, but I wrote the wrong name, okay? As you can see, I'm missing R here, okay? Is I didn't write log my var, but log my var. A R didn't know what to do. So here we got an error. A what tells us R? Object log my var not found. Of course, because it's not log my var, but it's log my var. Okay. So uh, anytime there is an error, R tells you something. Okay. But you can understand. If we look at log my var here, okay, on the bottom on the left, you can see that there is something different compared to the previous variable, okay? Here you can have all integer. Instead, here you can have something strange written over here. N, A, N. What does this mean? This means not a number, okay? Of course, why it happens this? Because we applied a function, you can see in number uh, 11, that doesn't make uh, any sense for particular number, okay? If you look at here in my variable, the first three numbers of my variable were negative number, okay? If we look at here, the first three elements of log my var are not a number because we cannot apply a logarithmic function to a negative number. Okay, so uh, we we have been able to apply this function. R returned to us a warning message saying, "Okay, I tried." Okay, I did almost anything, but something went wrong. What went wrong? I couldn't be able to process your function on part of your vector, okay? But of course, this is the correct way, okay? Because we know mathematics, and we know that we cannot apply 
logarithmic function to a negative number, okay? Try to think this on statistics. This means that you have to know what you are doing, okay? And sometimes you get warning and you have to know what you were doing with your statistics because otherwise you cannot understand the results you get from R, okay? Okay, we are almost at the end of this first lecture that uh, uh, wanted to give you an idea of what it means to, uh, to work uh, with R. Uh, here I showed you only just, uh, uh, just a function, random normal, okay? But anytime I do something, I try to program, to code something, uh, I need a different function. And where, where can I find the function I need? For example, I need to, do, to run a, an analysis of variance a linear model, a mixed effort model, so any other kind of statistical or statistical analysis. Where can I find some those function? Okay, it works in this way actually in uh, uh, in in R. Any function is stored in packages. Okay, packages are are like uh, uh, books. Okay. It means that if you are talking about uh, uh, analysis of variance, you, you need to have the book of analysis of variance. If you are talking on uh, uh, distribution models, you need to have the at least one book where you can read something about distribution model, okay? So you need to go in, in a library, okay? Buy your book. Okay, take it on your desktop and then you start studying and reading it, okay? If you want to learn something, what you do is go to the library, get your book, go home, go on your desktop and open the book and start reading it. You have to do exactly the same with R, okay? So what you have to do? You have to find the book that contains what you need, okay? And these are the packages that you can find on the web and mainly on the first link you can uh, you can read here up to on, on on the left is the CRAN project where you can find anything stored concerning R. Okay, you can go on the web and find any packages. We call it packages. Inside the packages, there are the function you need. Okay. What you need to do, you need to install the package on your computer, okay, before you use it. And then anytime you start the program, you need to load the package, okay? So it's like you go in a bookshop, you buy the, uh, the book uh, distribution modeling, you take it at home, you put it in your own library, and then anytime you start to work, you have to go and take your book and put it on your desktop to use it and to read it, okay? It's exactly the same. Next time you need to uh, work on distribution modeling, you don't need to go again at the bookshop and buy another book. You already bought your book, okay? Talking about distribution modeling. The same with R. Once you install your package, where you, uh, where inside you can find the um, the function you you need to do your analysis. You don't have to you do not have to install it again, okay? But you only have to take it from your library and put it on your desktop. And this is to load the package and so library call it and use it, okay? This is the way you use a package in R. Uh, actually, you ask a you, you you ask a question. I want to use the function is x x. Sorry, where is this function? I go on the web and look something. Okay, well, how can I do this uh, analysis with R? Okay, 
there is the function ANOVA, okay, the, that makes analysis of variance. So where can I find the function ANOVA? In the package Y, okay, in, the, in that package. So I, I go uh, on R console, I install the package, okay, if I am not uh, the package, I install it. Okay, and you can see here. If I have the package, I just load the package in my uh, in my library. Uh, of course, uh, there are common packages. They are pre used a lot of the time. Um, actually, R when when you install R software, uh, the basic commands are already installed in R. Okay. So, for example, when uh, we we tried to run the uh, log function here, line 11, uh, we uh, didn't do anything particular, okay? Because the log function is in the base package installed directly when you install R on uh, on your computer, okay? But when you do something a bit more complicated or that uh, uh, require a particular statistics or particular function, uh, probably most of the time that function are in different packages. So you need to install those packages, okay? These are a list of, for example, of the uh, useful uh, packages uh, where you can find most of the function you, you need to uh, to use it to wrangle data and to run some uh, some analysis, but of course, uh, anytime you uh, when, when you will start to run R, okay, and use programming, and you will get your own library or useful function and packages, okay. So once you install them, you can use them as as much as you want. I want to to end the the lessons of today uh, with the most important function to remember. Okay, a question mark. Okay, and you say, oh, why a question mark? Okay, uh, because if you use the question mark. Uh, you will find almost any answer to your question how to use something in R, okay? Because everything, everything, and when I say everything, it means anything you can try to use in R as its own help page, okay? And in your help page, you can find any information you need. Okay, so the most important thing is how to recognize uh, if uh, um, if the error uh, that we are encountering running our programming is uh, uh, a grammar error, a syntax error, and you have to be able to read the help to the help page or different function. Okay, uh, here you can see. Uh, not such a, a, a nice sentence uh, about people that wrote something uh, on, on the manual. Because uh, every time that someone wrote, writes, sorry, a function, okay, or a package, if, you, if they want to share it with the R community, they have to write a help page. So they already wrote the answer to your question. So before starting asking around everybody, how can I do it? I found an error. You should read the help page. OK, let's see how it, uh, uh, is uh, create a, 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 an help page. OK, all help pages are made exactly in the same way. OK, uh, here, for example, is uh, uh, a, 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 the help page of of the function overlay, okay? You can see up uh, uh, on the left here that uh, you can find in the package raster, okay? So the first line always tells you which function uh, is the help for and in which package you do. You can find a, 
uh, a very brief description overlay raster objects so you already know what it does okay you can find a proper description of the function okay you can always find this part in every function in the help page uh, so here you can see more sentences uh, is we don't need to know what overlay um, function does now but you can see something here so create create a new raster object and, and it describes you what it does then there is another point usage okay you can see at the middle of the page and uh, it gives you an example of how what you should write okay and as you can see here there is a function in this case is overlay after the function there are always brackets round brackets sometimes you will find that you can see the open brackets here and you will find the closed brackets on the on the end of the sentence and they are a series of arguments you have to fill in to pass to the function to make this function work okay what to do with these arguments okay you have another part of the help page that describes what to do with the arguments so arguments you have to pass x and y okay raster object another raster object of course if you want to do overlay of two different grid or raster objects you have to have to pass to the function the two raster object okay and then uh, there are other arguments okay uh, here then uh, in your help page you find always details if there is something particular okay you can see uh, the help page tells you okay what you uh, which are the particular situation then you have the value session okay the value session it tells you which is the format the class of your results okay then always suggest you see also which other which are other functions that can be related and that can do something similar and then for me, the most useful part of the help function is the example function, okay? In the example function, there are some example how to use your function. And what I do most of the time to understand how it works, the function is just copy the sample and paste it in the console, okay? So I can, I can understand what it does, okay? So every function has got a, an, help page L, every help page has got always these parts so description usuals and so on that we saw uh, uh, that we saw now okay before i leave you with the uh, last part i want to show you here how to do it in uh, in the consult how to, uh, how to find the help function I told you that the question mark is the only things you need to know. Okay, so if we go to console and we write a question mark, you can see here, I hope on the bottom of the left, I'm working on the console now. And for example, let's ask what R, R norm does. Okay, one of the functions that we used. Okay. You can see that here on the uh, right on the bottom, uh, uh, you can see the help box, okay? And this is the function. The, the function is in the stats package that is a default package you can always find when you install R, okay? What does the function mean? the normal distribution okay there is a brief description there is how to use it as you can see here there is not just our norm that we used but uh, there are several things sim functions similar to normal distribution because you can ask different uh, distribution for example okay the arguments Okay, 
the details actually here in the details okay it tells you exactly which function apply to calculate the normal distribution okay what you get as a result okay in this case is different depending on how you apply your function okay there is always the source okay some literature okay where you can find something uh, scientific some paper that you, if you need to uh, to know which is the source of the function we need some reference and again, you can find similar function and some example, okay? So you can run some example and, and, and this is probably the most important part. So when you will use something very difficult to uh, also doing, for example, distribution modeling or complicated uh, statistic analysis, uh, uh, general additive models uh, or uh, mixed after models uh, or any kind of Bayesian models, you will always find some example that uh, can help you. Okay. Again, last uh, the last. Uh, uh, the last two slides, we are almost done, five minutes less for the, uh, for the lessons. Uh, as uh, I said at the beginning today, uh, we didn't work a lot practical, practically, but I want to pass you the concept of how to program and how to uh, do uh, analysis. Uh, I, I would like to report a sentence of a famous scientist okay uh, everyone in the world knows albert einstein and he, he said uh, the formulation of a problem is often more essential than its solution that which may be merely a matter of mathematical or experimental skills okay so it doesn't matter if you are able to do it in a way to solve your analysis with r with cstat with any kind of program you need but the most important thing is that you have to be able to define the problem. If you de can define the problem, you can find the solution also with R. OK, so you have to understand the origin of your data. OK, you have defined the object. And you must keep it simple and stupid. OK, it, it could sound a bit uh, uh silly this thing but this is the most important thing keep it simple and stupid if you can uh, divide your problem in very simple and stupid uh, question in and then you sum them you can find the solution then translating to statistics is the last of the problem okay and and then uh, i we i I leave you with a sentence that will help us to start the next lesson next uh, on Thursday. If you can plot your data, okay, it means that you can make your analysis. Okay, so what what does what does it mean that if you can uh, write a sketch, a flowchart, if you can write a graph of your data, it means that you can work on them. OK, uh, I think that for today is almost two hours that I'm talking. Uh, uh, I'm done. It was a starting part. OK, I stop sharing my uh, if I'm able my. My screen. OK. Of course, there are a few minutes if you want to make any question. If I may, Francesco, just an addition. Uh, I'm pasting uh, something here in the, in the app. Uh, if you feel uneasy uh, with the comments, Francesco, uh, please uh, remember your mic because it's your sound is not working. It's not working now. Can you hear me now? OK.
Okay. Can you hear me now? It's better. Okay, fine. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience uh, with uh, the mic. <clears throat> I was saying, uh, if you feel uneasy with all the commands that Francesco did not show uh, us, uh, there are thousands of packages. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, more or less uh, six uh, to eight thousand of different packages. So figure out how many are the commands. No one can uh, know them all uh, or memorize them. So I posted here in the chat uh, some examples of uh, what uh, uh, we call cheat sheet. Uh, that is uh, 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 PDF files you can print on paper and keep on your desk while you're working. I remember uh, several years ago, more than 30 years ago, when I did my, my uh, degree thesis, I had a T-shirt, uh, a shirt, I mean, with a, the grammar of the C programming language printed here. And I was always looking at that shirt because I did not remember the language. Uh, don't be afraid, see how many uh, they have become. This is one of the nice things of, of being open. Anyone can contribute and for example you can download as i added in the chat this one who is the base r uh, cheat sheet see see it so you can note that the first as francesco said you uh, the first command is the question mark so if you uh, have some time and will to uh, try some steps by yourself before uh, next Thursday. Tuesday. Uh, starting from the cheat sheet could be a good point. So I stop here and if you have any question for Francesco and me, we are here to answer. Now you, you, yeah. Can you guys hear me? I got one question. Please. Fra Francesco, thank you for doing the class. Could you email your script? Uh, I know it's a it's a simple script that you did for demonstration. Uh, not everybody has computers, so they could at least see that script and run through it themselves. Uh, just as a, as a kind of review, if you could email that to Madi, that would be great. Yes, of course, uh, I will email you a complete uh, uh, file with all the scripts I used and uh, we will use next, uh, next uh, lesson. Uh, I didn't do it for the first one, just because I wanted uh, you to, to listen to me for today. But every example that I will show you from from Thursday on, uh, you will have the scripts uh, to be ready to use uh, on your computer. S sounds good. Uh, yeah, sometimes it's a little, it's just the logistics here. It's kind of hard to see the screen. Uh, but uh, it, I think we shared enough computers that everybody could see what was going on. Okay. Any other? Yes, for the um, uh, for the solution to distribute data, uh, we can have uh, I think uh, all. The, the email you use to log in to this video conference uh, using the, the attendance report that is automatically generated. So we will set up, <clears throat> I think, um, this afternoon for us or <laughs> tonight for you, a shared repository. I don't, I don't know, either on Google Drive or whatever it came, and we will share the link with this. Uh, uh, we will place here all the PDF, all the cheat sheet, and all the code, of course. Any other questions? Thank you. No, no. But uh, for the first time, for example, for me, uh, to learn everything is difficult. But uh, after 
you say same to us everything uh, within it's all of course depend on the on our service so we will try to more <laughs> learn how to before next lecture yes. Uh, yes. I, I I won't worry too much because in um, Fran Francesco is a good guinea pig for these. Uh, is the, is the demonstra demonstration that anyone can uh, learn R more or less in uh, 10 to 15 days. Uh, myself uh -huh. started in 2005 and uh -huh. I was learning R. I had to do all the maps, uh, 200 maps uh, for a bird uh, atlas, you know. And I have four weeks time. I learned R. <laughs> I'm I'm rereading. Francesco knows this history. Uh, I'm rereading every now uh, and then the code I wrote uh, uh, 20 years ago, and I love when I read the, this code now. But uh, that code, ugly, uh, uh, badly written, it worked. And remember, as Francesco said, our objective is uh, don't be the master of R. Uh, in, uh, in, uh, as, as, as an aside, the master of R was uh, Ross Ihaka, the man who invented the R language, now is retired, and now the master of R is Adley Wickham, of course, another one from New Zealand. It uh, works in, uh, in the United States in Texas. So no one uh, can be the master of R because we already, we already have one, but we can learn. The, the, um, the most important thing is what Francesco is doing with your data, that is uh, put the hand not just on the examples, because examples like uh, uh, the first one that Francesco showed us this morning have to be simple, has to be stupid, uh, maybe too stupid, but uh, we will start from the next lesson to uh, try and solve some real world problems. So the problem will become reasoning on finding a solution. And th this is a thing that happens in our brain, not in our. When we, is a, it's like making, um, it's like traveling. You have first to figure out where do you want to go? And then we can choose uh, a plane, a boat, uh, a bike, whatever. Any other? Um, Damiano and Francesco, I'm sorry if it's coming just now, but uh, okay. um, the person who just talked to you is Suchulun. He is the head of the laboratory of mammalian ecology and he is our direct collaborator uh, here at the Mongolian Academy of Sciences in the Institute of Biology. So just to make the presentation. Okay, thank you, Victoria. <laughs> and thank you, Suchu. Well, if there are no more answer, curiosities, uh, problems, issue, and whatever, uh, I will say that we can meet uh, for the next lesson on uh, Tuesday, in the afternoon for you, <laughs> in the morning for us. But uh, the Victoria, Victoria figure out a time frame was convenient, I think, for both parties. And so uh, have a nice afternoon for you. <laughs> And uh, have a nice meal for us. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Vittorio Francesco. Thank you, everybody.